Now let's take a look at the various region creation methods. If I would click the Add New Region button without anything selected in the viewport, a new region will be created and it will have exactly the size of the full output. This way I could go and subdivide it, for example, 4 by 3 times, and this would give me the same result as doing the tower rendering. 12 machines would actually render fractions of this image. You also notice that the um, width and height are set to display pixels, but internally the actual region is stored in normalized screen space. So, if I would open the render dialog of 3ds Max and change the resolution to 800 by 600, then close the dialog and hit the update list button, the same region will now list correctly the pixels that you would expect to render at this point. Let's hit the undo button, which will undo the step of uh, creation, and uh, select something in the viewport. For example, I can select this mirror, and I can add a new region. At this point, when there is a scene selection in the viewport, uh, the uh, new region is going to be uh, adjusted to match the size of the bounding box of this object. I'll undo this, and I'll select a couple of objects that are far away from each other. For example, there is another mirror there. And now with two mirrors selected, if I add new region, this region is going to take the combined bounding box of both, the minimum of this and the maximum of this. If I wanted two regions to be added, one for each mirror, I could undo this step and go to Create From menu. In this menu, I can say Create From Scene Selection, and at this point, two regions will be created. This is the active one, the number one, and that's the number two, which is the second mirror. And, um, of course, um, if I had many more objects, I could go, for example, and say Select the whole car, and create from scene selection. This asks me, do I want to replace the existing regions or append to them? I'm going to replace the regions and this will now run through all the scene objects and fit a region to each one of them. It will take a little bit, but now we have too many overlapping regions and if we would send this to render, it's actually going to render uh, more than two and a half times the number of pixels that we would normally render of this image and this is not good due to the overlapping and constantly combining pixels that already exist. So what we could do is using the same menu we can go and say we want to optimize these regions and we can do an optimize with 25% overlap greater than 50% to greater than 35%. If we do greater than 25 we're going to get a single region that combines all those regions because they were overlapping more than 25% anyway. If I draw uh, an undo step backwards and then uh, go and try to optimize by 50%, we are still getting the whole car. So uh, let's see what the 75% will give us. This gives us two regions this time. The one, actually three, the one region is the bottom of the car, one is approximately where the cabin is, and there is a set of regions on the top. This is also not exactly optimal, but we could actually uh, optimize it manually. We can uh, select, for example, this region and drag uh, its border until it snaps to the other one. And potentially we could even combine these two, just uh, holding control, selecting both, and then using the uh, merge greater than 25%, and now we have a single region on the top. This is one way to uh, quickly take uh, a large selection of scene objects and produce few regions that cover them all. Of course, we can also clone these regions. For example, if I want to clone one region up, I could go and click on the clone up with the left mouse button, and this is going to produce a new region with the same size going up and I can click again and it will continue going up. At this point I can click once more to add a tiny region which will be uh, adjusted to the size of the screen so it doesn't go too high. Or alternatively I could just grab this region and snap it to the edge of the view. Uh, similarly, with this region selected, if I uh, click the left mouse button, this is going to produce a region with the correct size on the left side, and if I reselect the central region and right-click 
the clone left right button the right click is going to clone to the right and this gives me another region there of course at this point I could go and drag down and you'll notice that when the mouse is to the left of the center of this region where the handle is it's going to snap and if it's on the right side it doesn't snap so it's looking for a region that is closer um, to uh, the mouse position where we are holding the uh, line and if I catch it here close to the snapping point and want to disable the snap I can hold the control key and then the snap will be disabled and I can release anywhere I want without the control key pressed it's going to snap and of course I can snap through uh, pretty much any region that exists around here and in fact I can even snap to regions that are far away by just moving the mouse there uh, so for example if this region was something like this so we have a border here and then we want to snap this one to this and to this this works well if I wanted to snap to this one I just have to move the mouse over there and now the snapping is actually taken into account because it knows that I intended to actually snap to, to this region obviously I can go with copy down here right click again and snap here I can select this region and do a right click here to do right select this region and left click to clone left and then we just need one region at the bottom I can get again this one I can draw a clone down with the right click here and then probably just snap it to the edges of the view of course I can enter the coordinates myself I can dial in any numbers here but it's actually much more intuitive to work in the viewport at this point I could go to the body of the car and increase the number of machines that will be working on it since it's actually the slowest part of the rendering I can split it 8 by 4 so this will give me uh, 32 regions just on the car here and the rest of the environment will have separate machines working that's probably not even very uh, necessary but um, for example I could merge these two uh, regions select the two and just uh, uh, combine them together uh, there is a button that says merge selected I can just click on this one and if the selected regions are not even close to each other if I select this and holding control select the other one uh, if I do merge selected they're going to be merged into a single large region so at this point I probably don't really need the one on top um, that means I can uh, click the delete region button and this will remove that one actually it removed everything that was there selected yeah and um, at this point I will have to probably resize this one to snap over there and um, I would say we could subdivide it into multiple subregions and at this point with this uh, single region with three sub-regions selected I can hit the split to tiles button and this is going to produce three new uh, regions that I can uh, work with individually so I can go and subdivide this one for example vertically and horizontally uh, and probably do something similar here uh, vertically and horizontally um, and leave this one as a separate region so as you can see we can easily uh, combine we can merge we can split I can select these two again and make them one if I wanted to uh, and it keeps the settings of the uh, one of the two regions or I can go and uh, undo the whole thing and go backwards uh, to a state before we started merging these two and it looks like I actually don't have a region over here so I should be uh, snapping this one to, to the bottom in order to fill the whole uh, quadrant over there additionally we can also uh, let's say that we want to select all the regions and delete them and uh, we could get the settings from our um, tower rendering right now in tower rendering we have three by three this is what it looks like if I wanted to create exactly that kind of distribution or let's say I will go here to a different number something like 6 by 4 for example 
if I wanted this 6x4 to be created as an actual uh, multi-region setup in the jigsaw rollout, I can click on the Create From button and say I want to use the tile grid settings. So uh, when I do this, you see that I'm actually producing 24 tiles, which can be now individually selected and moved around and so on. I'll go and disable the display of uh, the gizmo behind them. And now you can see that we have individually editable uh, regions. Starting with this grid, I could now go and say, for example, I'm going to select the first six, for example. Uh, I can hold control and click here, or I can do the same thing in the list and just select them there. And if I wanted to merge these guys into a single region, I can do this. I can repeat the same at the bottom and say, OK, uh, we don't really need much subdivision down there. We can let one machine work on this and then hit the merge button. And now I have a version of the original tile rendering that is more adapted to the car. I could grab this and move it down and then I could go here and say, okay, each one of these regions will have to be snapped down to the uh, bottom region in order to cover it correctly. Or I could create potentially a small region over here. For example, I can select this guy, I can click right click here to create region down, snap it here, snap it over there, and this gives me one filler in order to be able to work. Submitting this to the network is going to uh, get 15 machines working on the whole image, and of course it's going to concentrate on where the actual ray tracing is happening. Uh, the top region will just do the sky, which will be really quick, and the bottom will be dealing with the ground, which doesn't really require much uh, calculations. These are uh, some of the most important uh, creation methods. Uh, I would have to mention that we can also create a region, a new region, uh, which is taken directly from the 3ds Max region rendering uh, settings. So if I click this, it's going to create one region that matches whatever were the last known settings in the 3ds Max uh, setup. I can undo this and uh, it looks like uh, not all steps that we're performing. For example, resizing doesn't create undo records, only creation of uh, regions creates undo records. So if you want at some point to set an undo record without an automatic uh, recording, you can hit the hold button and this is going to create a manual undo. So at this point, if I undo once, it's going to go back here. If I redo, it will go and remember the changes in size that I made. We did this because uh, otherwise, every time you resize something, it would create another undo record and it would populate the list really quickly. Here you can see all the steps that we performed during the current demonstration. And um, we can obviously uh, set holds whenever we expect uh, that something major is going to change and we're not sure if everything will be completely captured by the automatic undo buffer. All these regions that we created could be saved to uh, the current camera. Right now we have a camera in the viewport. If I switch uh, this viewport to perspective mode, for example, and try to uh, save something, I can click this button and I'm going to get a message that says that the current view is not a camera and that doesn't allow me to store anything because we will be using the actual object. So I can select the camera one, which is uh, the view that we're currently working with. And then we can store in this view, I can enter a name, which is called demo test 15, because we created 15 tiles, but the actual 15 is going to be stored anyway as part of a record. I can go to store in camera and say, I want to save a new preset. And when I click then on get from camera, we'll see that a new preset with 15 regions was uh, stored. It says demo test 15 was saved by me on my machine on this date uh, from this scene. If I wanted to take a look at uh, some uh, previous uh, savings, this is, for example, one that was saved last year before SIGGRAPH uh, from a different version of this scene. And it had a name which is called uh, Full Image Grid, Attention to the Wheels. And when I select this one, I'm going to get this distribution. Uh, at that point, I assumed that there will be lots of ray tracing happening on the wheels. And I wanted more machines to concentrate here and less over there. And I had some other uh, stored setups, just the cabin. 
Um, that was uh, one of the first tests that I was uh, uh, performing here and I have only the wheels start again as a preset. And um, you can uh, store any number of these presets in your cameras. Each camera will have its own region settings stored and if you want to pass them to somebody else you can easily just go and uh, save this. We have a button that says load and save. And basically uh, from, uh, from this menu we can say we want to uh, save the, the regions to a file on disk and then later we can load in a different scene. But if you merge your camera into another scene, these uh, presets are going to travel with the camera. So I can just merge a camera, you can do save selected, save it in a max file, pass it to somebody else and he can merge it and the camera will be in the right place with the right regions. As you can see, uh, there are various ways to preserve the data and in fact, in addition, even if you don't save uh, your current settings, if you would go and save the max file to disk and open uh, the next day or the next month or even a year later, the last region settings that you uh, created using the Jigsaw settings are going to persist with the scene without even being saved in the camera. They're just part of the scene. 